Hello, welcome to Physics One. I am Ms. Marchant. Today you're going to do the orientation, the scavenger hunt, and the introductory discussion. So the main part of this Zoom is going to be mainly on how to handle Canvas and find things in there, and then a little bit of information on 1.1. You do want to take notes on the textbook before I go over the content typically in class. That way you have some pre-reading there and it'll help jog your memory in a positive way. So tips to be successful, make sure you print that first equation sheet. I know it's like 10 pages, but if you have it open in a separate tab, I find a lot of times people then write down the equation incorrectly, and then they get the whole problem wrong. And sometimes those problems are worth eight or 10 points, and it really is frustrating if you get all the way done. It's because you've missed a squared sign on the equation, so you can it at all possible print the um, formula equation sheet. Uh, don't skip the textbook work. There's lots of practice problems in there. It's gonna be kind of like how you would do a college class where you do that textbook work and then you come in the class and we fine tune it in class. Redo any low worksheets so that, especially if you struggle in math, that you can get some good grades on the worksheet to balance out any low quiz scores and keep your work in your notebook. So you're gonna take notes in your notebook and then right after that, write quiz one and then show your work on it. So at the end of the quiz and it says you got problem number four wrong, you can look at problem number four and say, okay, did I just plug it in my calculator wrong? Is my equation correct? And physically correct it. After you've corrected quiz one, decide if you wanna retake it again. And then always email and ask questions if you get stuck. How do we get to physics class? You have to go to www.virtualvirginia.org, because okay? that is where your login information is. If you do not have your login information yet, email your counselor right now so that you can get it. Hit pause on the video and do that so you do not forget. When you're at virtualvirginia.org, I think it's on the left side, it'll be something called dashboard. Click the dashboard. And then you have to scroll all the way down. So if you see right here, I have an example and all of the Spanish um, assignments are there. Plus if there were additional courses, there'd be other, um, you could have chemistry, you could have math. You'd have to scroll through all of that to get down to the bottom where it says academic snapshot. That is how you get to Canvas. You click on the link in the academic snapshot in dashboard. Now, some of you are gonna go, oh, look, there's an academic snapshot on a separate page that is a different academic snapshot. It's just called the same thing. That will not get you where you need to go. You have to go to dashboard page all the way down and then click that physics course at the bottom. Okay? And that's gonna bring you to your Canvas course. Do not bookmark that because it's gonna lose your login information every day. Every day, go to virtualvirginia.org and then go to your Canvas class. That way you are not um, missing where it is or losing data. Okay. And make sure you do know how to screenshot in the live session so that you have that as a reference, but then do add in any of those problems to your notes. All right, a lot of people like to just go to that to-do list, which is gonna be over there on the right side. That is not going to be enough in physics class. Make sure you are gonna go over to modules on the left side because that's where the textbook is and you will need the textbook to get through this course. Okay, and then the next day, always check your feedback, which shows up underneath the to-do list so that you can go, oh, that's what I did wrong. Maybe I should go ahead and retake it. Okay. There are formula sheets. This is what the formula sheet looks like, or one of the formula sheets. And it just gives you a lot of important information on there. You can also modify it if you have printed it out. So you can go, hey, wait, we also ended up using um, kilometers 
for length. So let me write over here that kilometers is sometimes going to be used for length, just so that you can always update that formula sheet so it has a complete package. And in fact, I still use my engineering training reference book. It's about a two inch thick book of just equations. I don't memorize all those as an engineer. I know I can always go to the book and find it. And so you'll also want to be able to go to your formula sheet and find the problem equation. You do not need to memorize any of those equations, but you need to be able to find them. So organization is critical. Okay. Don't skip the practice because they have good things that are in there that is going to help you either on the worksheet or on the lab or on the test later on. So even though it's not a graded activity, you still want to do everything in modules. All right, now just a little bit of 1.1 knowledge. Scalars and vectors. Okay, so when we're looking at a scalar, it is just the number. This is called the magnitude, okay? In vectors, there is also a magnitude, but what else does vectors have? Vectors also have direction, okay? So when you're looking at something, if it has a number like 10 meters, that's a scalar. But if it says 10 meters west, then we know that we moved 10 meters west. And so that is a vector quantity. When we're trying to determine things, okay, a scalar is path dependent, okay? So if I walk to school two different ways, I have two different paths that I have to look at. But when I'm dealing with vectors, I only care about the starting and ending positions, F for final, I for initial or start. So the ending position minus the beginning position gives me my change in distance, which is actually called displacement, okay? So as opposed to the path dependent, maybe one day you take a shortcut to school and another day you have to walk around because something's blocking the alley you like to go through. So those could have two different distances to get to school. But in terms of the vector, there's still just going to be the starting and ending points that matter and subtracting them for the delta D. Okay, Delta just means change. Um, in math, it is a Greek symbol of delta there. And here's just another little visual on that. Okay, Who depends on initial and final displacement? Okay, Vectors care about initial and final positions. If we're going initial and final distance, we would use that black arrows distance or length because that's giving us as the crow flies between the two. So when you initially look at ways or something, it usually gives you the as the crow flies distance, the exact mileage to get from B from A. Okay. But that's not always what you can do. Sometimes you have to get on a highway or you have to go something else. Sometimes your path is different. So that orange line is what the scalar quantity is, the path that it would be. So again, displacement and distance. Okay, If someone runs on a 400 meter track that's a circular or oval track, is their distance and displacement the same or dis different? So think about it, our circumference is 400 meters on that track. Okay? They ran 400 meters if they started and stopped at the same point. Is that path or displacement? They ran 400 meters, that's the path. But their displacement, did they change? Did our distance change? Are we still at the same point? Yes, their starting and ending positions are the same. So their displacement is zero. So that's really, really careful to think about if they want your scalar quantity or your vector quantity. Okay. And how can we put it? We had lots of little key terms there. So magnitude is that number. Okay, and scalars and vectors both have magnitudes. Units, that gives us a frame of reference. Five kilometers is way different than five inches. So you need those units to let you know the scale. So scalars and vectors use units. Okay, so a scalar is gonna have an M and a U. 
but a vector has the full mud magnitude, unit, and direction. So we're here we have a car travels five kilometers in 30 minutes on I-94 North. We have a magnitude and we have units and we have a direction. The dog raced after the rabbit for 3.0 miles. We have a magnitude, we have a unit. Does it say where? No, nope, we don't know which direction the rabbit went. You can't just say um, three miles towards the rabbit. Okay, that's not going to be clear. So that is a scalar quantity. The baby spun the top in a circular motion. Okay, so we do have a direction. Okay, we knowing that it's going in circular, that might not seem like a true direction, but we will get to it in higher physics, not this year, that there is something that you can do on a circular plane system. But there is definitely no magnitude or units that we know, no matter what, that one is still not going to be a vector. And in fact, it's not even a scalar because a scalar needs magnitude and units. The vulture swooped down to get the mouse at a speed of 30 meters per second down still counts as a direction. So that is a vector quantity. And just really make sure you're reading carefully to see what they want you to input. Um, sometimes it is gonna ask for a vector quantity, but not give you a spot to put um, the direction and then that is fine. I will always spot check the quizzes. If you gave more information than needed, I would still give you credit. So again, if you don't have your login information, email your counselor. Make sure you complete the orientation, the scavenger hunt, and the introduction discussion. Take notes on 1.1. And then just remember that these Zoom reviews are just little quick snapshots of what is the most critical information. But you do still need to do everything in the Canvas lesson to get all that you need out of this. And have a great day.